Hey guys, welcome back to the stock market. Another day, Wednesday, middle of the week. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Ay, 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 ay. Or Cinco de Mayo. However you played it today. Um, we'll start with how weird of a day it was in the market. We're noticing volume, 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 volume. Crypto and what is going on uh, on the daily for today. 2.7 yep 2.7 million is the smallest the least amount of volume we've had on gamestop since last year i went back every daily candle just for your hearing pleasure and checked and this is the lowest volume we've had all year it's been like since october of last year um another thing that's crazy not only with crypto um Different cryptos going crazy and seems like possibly some a lot of different DD on Reddit about crypto's relation to GME. Not just crypto really, more just I guess Doge in general, but it could be could be a lot of crypto, I'm not sure. Um and yeah, basically crypto was kind of inversing the market today, and it seems like uh you know, when crypto would go up, and not all crypto either, it'd be Ethereum or Bitcoin or, you know, cash, whatever it was, then the market would be going down. And then another strange observation was that uh, the SPY, just the volume was so low today on the SPY. So low, look at this, this is 54 million today on the SPY. Yesterday was 100 million, 68, 85, 78, 51 see these are such look at these tiny little candles is such low volume 52 i mean the candle doesn't necessarily mean the volume but you can see the volume is very low today and then even the chart itself look how weird this is i don't know what's going on i i shared a couple of tweets the other day when i saw this look at these weird candles i don't know if this is a uh, lack of volume or i don't i don't get what's going on Look at this on the five minute. Look at all these weird little candles in here. It's so strange. I'm noticing on other stocks too. I pointed this out before. Um, and I thought it was from lack of volume because it just looks like a penny stock. But it's not even like that low of volume. Here's a firm, by the way. This thing got tanked today. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm wondering if it's correlated with Shopify somehow since they did good on their earnings. It, I guess that could be bad for a firm, but I don't I don't see the correlation. That's a bad pickup for us. Bad one. This is very bearish looking, so I'll probably just be holding that. Um, GME though today on the hourly chart, eh, it's kind of, it, I like to see at least three indicators working in my direction. And then you've got price action moving averages. So on the hourly, the MACD is good. RSI is fine. Uh, the moving average, we've got Sorry, it's kind of a mess here, but we've got the nine moving average here in the red candle below that. That's bearish. These are both bullish. Then this nine being below the 180 is bearish. Um, so it's kind of a tie breaker on the hourly chart. But what's fine though, why it's fine is because we are still on this wedge. And today we kind of just kind of grinded up this, this bit right here. And if we look back here on the top side, we grinded there for a couple days. Let's see, this is 27, so it's 27, 28, 29, 30. We've got like three days we grinded on that top top side. Right now we're on day two on this bottom side. Possible we'll just kind of grind up one more day and then it might break out tomorrow or the next day. And it might not be a breakout. It might just be a push up to the top of this wedge. Um, and we, we could be in this bigger one too, actually. That's kind of my theory from before, is that we're in this bigger wedge. So, looking for uh, some green green life ahead of us for GME. Probably up, bouncing around this 170 area, 172, depending on how soon we do it. You know, if it's not for next week, it'll be down here. But if it's sooner, it'll be here. But probably another day similar to, it'll be like this day, but upside down the other way so we'll be going up um but it's possible we just kind of stay grinding up slowly like this for another day and then come up um this this wedge has it for the 17th 
possible it could happen before then. 17th puts it on uh, Monday after next. A lot of other wedges have kind of earlier predictions. I don't know. I do know that GME is affecting, maybe not just GME, but all this stuff with over leveraged banks and um, naked shorts and all these different things that should not be going on. Uh, the repo market, uh, housing market, um, it's, it's, and crypto now, and Doge, and Robinhood, and, uh, yeah, it's, something's, something's afoot, something's coming, and we've been, we've been kind of knowing that, if you're new to the market, this isn't normal, um, I'm somewhat new to the market, I've been, been doing it for a couple years, uh, I went through COVID crash and, you know, I learned a lot then and, and then I've been through the biggest bull run ever in history, which was since COVID. And what we're seeing now is just a total, I think, shift in the market. And I've talked to people that have been trading the market for 15 years and they've just been getting wrecked the last like year or two because it's so different. There's so, there's so many differences that have happened in the stock market um, just in the last year or two between printing money and then retail getting in and then um, all this over leveraged stuff and them relaxing the the restrictions on leverage after covid to try and help the economy and just all these different factors are really making the the stock market we're not seeing it yet really but it's making the stock market very unsettling and uh i guess maybe you're kind of starting to see it in the vix which is the volatility index this, I think this doesn't even track it right right now though because I I'm thinking that it's much much more unsettled than this is showing it just hasn't quite happened yet but if you look on here I mean on the daily chart it is bullish on this this and this so maybe some calls on the VIX the thing is with the VIX I think it was the VIX it used to be like three times um, they changed all these after COVID because you were making tons of money on these and they were crazy I, I don't know why they changed them but that was my theory because they're all like three times VIX or three times volatility leverage and UVXY was three times and like it was crazy. And now they're kind of all just inverse. So I don't know, but market's doing weird stuff. Um, I've never seen, and this could just be this brokerage. I looked on E-Trade and I wasn't noticing it, but sometimes the more obscure random brokerages will show you insight into the stock market. Whereas you wouldn't have if you're looking at a Robinhood chart or an E-Trade. Um, because they don't have, uh, they're not set up to basically mask it as you would be on those bigger platforms. And I think that's kind of what I'm seeing here with these abnormal candles. And then also just the fact, the fact that we have such low volume. Oh, stock market. All right. So crypto today, we did some, we did some trading, um, GME. Yeah, it's looking good. I mean, if we're in this wedge break out any time, um, I've got shares, I've got options. I opened up, let's just go over GME options that we did today. Got Airbnb tank today. I'm making money on SPY daily options though, which I'm not, I haven't done that a whole lot. A whole lot. I've done credit spreads on SPY, but uh, yeah, I've been like buying puts and holy smokes. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get uh, margin. I've already gotten margin called in this account. Just day trading too much on it and now i don't know we'll see but anyways um put credit spread on spy opened up some more or i'm sorry on gme opened up some more put credit spreads uh when it was real low today and that's these 162 165 put credit spread so basically yeah i kind of laid into this one pretty good so we'll see what happens hopefully hopefully it's right it's uh for GME, it's got to close above 165 by Friday. Um, that was kind of on originally on my thesis that we're gonna be above max pain, which we don't necessarily have to be, but um, but it changed because the options changed. But I think this will change back after we have a good green day. But the max pain before was 165, now it's 162 and a half. Um, but yeah, so this basically has to close at 165 or higher by Friday. And it, I don't have to wait until then. If we have a big green day, these will I'll be able to I can close these out if I don't think we're gonna close that high. 
and I'll be able to take some profits. Um, max profits 1800 on it, max losses 862. And then I've got this put credit spread, which is a little more conservative. Um, 160 bucks max profit, $90 max loss. And this one, GME has to close above 160. And then we've got these debit spreads, which unless this thing squeezes this week, these will expire worthless, unfortunately. Yeah, that's $700 in credit spreads, ugh. Or, or debit spreads, rather. Um, So this one I should probably close out of. If, if we bounce up tomorrow and hit that resistance on the top end, like 170 or so, hopefully just have some value and be able to close this one and that one. I'm really waiting for a breakout, though. If, they, if we don't break out of that wedge to the upside, I am, I'm not going to believe even a big even a big spike. Um, it also has to carry with volume. So today on GME we saw... We saw spikes, but uh, just a little bit of volume, a little bit of volume. And even if it was big, if, if this thing just started running up, and if it ran up today, I mean, imagine if it ran 163 to 170, you'd be like, oh my goodness, it's happening. Not necessarily, not not in my opinion, not until we break out of this wedge with volume, you know, 180, 190, like we really have to break out of it to the upside for me to think, okay, we're we're done with this wedge. Uh, until then, we're we're in the constraints of this so if we see a big run up expect it to bounce off the top side of this um basically not break this resistance level up here you know so you could say it's here you could say it's here there 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 the resistance of that once we break that resistance then i'm like okay this is this is bullish squeeze has started some sort of squeeze gamma squeeze but maybe not even a squeeze maybe we'll just start running up and then we'll slowly start a squeeze and we will just um ride the ride the wave um, spy puts today, man, we did them. Uh, we've got 414 spy put for, uh, Friday. I've got a call credit spread on spy for Friday. Also, I did some daily spy puts today on bounces. Actually, it worked pretty well. I held on it too long. I'm not used to really daily spy options. Um, spy opened up here. I'm bearish on the spy. This is there's a nice bounce to short it though, so buy your puts here and have fun on the way down. Um, spy ran up yesterday at market close, so market opened here. I bought spy puts. We can, I can show the history here. Let's see, today's orders, filled orders. Doge, um, hmm. wasn't in there. Well, anyways, we had. We had spy puts. It was a 413 spy put. It was up like 100% just in like no time at all. It's I forget trading daily because this one expired today. Bought it here at 417. Right when market opened. Typically, I don't want to do that because you're paying a premium. Uh, but the sentiment wasn't that it was going to drop. So I don't know. It was a $30 play. Went up to like 150 at one point here. Um, I kind of held it too long. Came back up here and then... I actually ended up selling out down here. You know what? That was actually on E-Trade. Yeah, 414 put. See, I shouldn't be doing daily trades on here. Too difficult to see what's going on. But yeah, anyways. Did the spy put for that and then got some for expiration of Friday on that bounce. And um, those are up 60% already. So that's a 414 put. This will probably go in the money uh tomorrow and if it has a big drop then i'll get rid of them and uh buy some more puts on a bounce but that's the spy plays for today i did do some i did do some doge coin did do doge coin uh yeah we had a good run up here like 40 percent i bought in down here came up here looked at the indicators macd crossed over red candles below the nine moving average I thought I could hold it because I think this thing's going to still keep running until SNL and then on Saturday and then maybe it'll sell off. Uh, but I did see it there and I'm like, I can just trade this thing so I don't need to hold it. So I sold out here as big drop and I'm forgetting that I can just day trade this thing in and out. Uh, there is quite a bit of slippage, but um, I could have dip traded it here, but I wanted to wait for more confirmation. I got in a little early. Um, I got in like right here. And then it, it filled me up here, of course, even though it was a limit order. That was the lowest I could get filled. And it's kind of kind of coming back down. Now on the hourly, it's bearish. MACD's crossed over nine. 
I'm fine to hold it though. It'll probably bounce either right where it's at right now or come down to 56, maybe even come down to 53. Um, basically what we're waiting for is if you switch over the daily chart, we're waiting for this RSI to come down on the daily. Uh, once it has come down, that means it's a, it's consolidated enough. It can go for another run, kind of like it did here. Ran up really fast, RSI went crazy, and then it had to kind of sell off and consolidate some, and then it was ready to run again. So I think that's what we're looking for on that. Expect, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or the next day, if it consolidates tight enough, that it'll be ready for another run. I think it'll be a dollar by Saturday. I don't like to give price predictions, but um, I don't know, maybe this is the very top. I don't really think so, but we will see. Uh, we did pretty good on that though today on it yeah 464 on it today that was only with like 800 dollars in it <laughs> um and yeah then i sold out of it because i just like i'll buy it at a lower price because i think it's coming back down and it did and i bought in a little early but no big deal and then on our long term today <clears throat> whoa sell off after hours oh, rockets earnings no way Rocket, you bugger. Misses. 89 per share, missing as a 90. Oh, it's basically right on. Quarterly sales of 4 billion, which beat. The EPS is like right on, though. Everything is selling off with earnings right now. Um, that's, that's why I actually have this Zilla play. That's a put. And... Um, yeah, we were up quite a bit on that. We're up 176% right now. I bought this thing at market open right here and it just sold off and it, it's probably going to keep going. I would have sold out of it, but uh, I can't day trade this thing because there's a cash account and I'd get a good strike violation. So, but rocket mortgage, this, this, see, this might have a big bounce though. Had a big sell off from earnings. 4.6 million versus street estimate of 4.2 wait a minute post 4.6 million versus 4.2 billion i'll have to read into that more no adjusted sales 4 billion beat 3.9 okay sales revenue though is only 4.6 million they thought it was gonna be 4.2 billion i think that's a typo maybe not though that's crazy um anyways i'm a long-term bull on rocket but this this isn't, this isn't looking good. And our calls on Rocket are not going to be doing good if that stays down. Also, we had Corsair earnings. They they killed it on earnings. And that was this day, and it sold off because the market was selling off. And then today, basically, all the other companies that killed it on earnings have been selling off. Zillow, Amazon, um, all the big ones. But not Corsair. This thing ran up, which is sick. Kind of did a midday just kind of settling down. But I think it's got some steam now. I think it'll have a continuation. This candle wick at least kind of broke the resistance of those. So, I mean, it's in a bullish pattern. We'll see if that one keeps going. Woo. I did open up a Fidelity account. I will be transferring my long term to Fidelity. Or E-Trade and then trading with Fidelity. I'm not sure yet. I heard Fidelity has the best um, execution prices, like basically the least amount of skim skimmage. But I looked at their like power, not power trade, but their trading app or program for the computer. And the thing is awful, man. I'm sure I could get used to it, but it's just, I hate the way it looks. So I might just keep trading on E-Trade and then do long-term on Fidelity. And yeah, just go from there. Oh, um, Microvision, I mean, look at Microvision. Still, still pretty bullish. It's still kind of like a bull flag. MACD still looks good. I think this will still be good. Probably kind of moving with the market a little bit. Big deal with crypto right now and uh, the low volume on SPY. It's very, very peculiar what's going on. Um, anyways, that's it for me, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. Follow us on Twitter at Happy Money YT. This was actually a good article on Market Watch. Uh, rich guys are divorcing their wives they can uh basically protect their money <laughs> in, in this fallout that's coming that is kind of the theory and it seems seems quite true really 
but we'll see. Jump on our Discord too. We'll do a little after hours party on here. I'm putting in plays and we're sharing DD if you have DD on here. Uh, due diligence on different companies. Um, I'm going to be sharing news on here, up to date news. And that news today was uh, Peloton is having a big recall. I didn't actually play it, but you could have. Um, so Peloton took a huge dump today on that news. And yeah, there's news like that that comes out all day. So sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. See you guys tomorrow. Buenas noches.